Hi folks! In this video I'm going to sew a crossbody messenger bag. Keep watching! Before we get started making a messenger bag with our Cricut Maker, I wanted to give you a close-up look at how I did this one. The strap, I believe it finished around 48 inches. In the file it's over 50 inches so that you can measure the length that you like and cut it to size once you're installing it and I'll show you how that's done. Um, I did a flap on this one with a magnetic snap. That was the first time I did one. I backed it with some heavy infusible interfacing between the layers so that it would be nice and secure and it wouldn't shred the cotton. It's got a good base behind it and I did that also here before I installed the lining. On this one, I put the flap inside the end of the flap. I didn't really like doing it that way because I found when I tried to install my straps between the layers, there was too much bulk inside the layers and I didn't like how that looked. Also, when I was sewing around, it was a little more difficult with the flap inside. So on this one, I'm going to do it a, a little differently. I've got some stuffing in here just to give it some shape. Because this was my demo version, I didn't use any batting in it. This is also quite a heavy upholstery fabric. And a lot of people have asked where I got it. I bought it um, last year, I believe it was, at Tuesday morning in Florida. Um, I was visiting Melody Lane and we went to Tuesday morning and I picked up this fabric. So this was the last of it. I think I only have a little piece left. Maybe I could make a zipper pouch to go inside of this. But that's about how much fabric I have left. It's too bad. I love it. I think it's really pretty fabric. I did a single pocket inside of this one. I put the cut in the file also for the pocket. And I'll show you how I did it. You can put more than one pocket, of course, or extend the pocket larger right across, however you prefer. But I just did one pocket on the inside. This batting is what I'm going to use this time. It's quite thin. I bought it online. I don't think I really looked what I was buying, but it says batting for quilted clothing. It's quite thin, but I think it's all that I want in this messenger bag, so I'm going to use it for this. You can use regular um, cotton, all-natural cotton batting if you like, or if you prefer, you can use fusible interfacing or fusible fleece, whatever it is that you like to work with but I'm going to use this thin batting today. And I think I'm going to use these fabrics. I think I'm going to make the outside of the messenger bag a plain, I have lint here, wow. I think I'm going to make the outside of the bag a plain navy, but I want the inside to be a little whimsical, so I think I'm going to use these polka dots. And these are Riley Blake, fabrics that were in quilt kits that I got from Cricut and I, I like to use some of them. I bought a lot. <laughs> so I want to use some of the fabric to make different projects. So I'm going to get everything cut out on my maker and I'll be back to show you what it looks like and how we get started. So I've got all my pieces cut out. We're just going to run through quickly so I can show you what they are. Um, these are my magnetic snaps, and I've cut two pieces of heavy interfacing that are going to go behind the lining fabric to install the snap and give it some body so that it doesn't tear through the fabric from continuously pulling on the snap. You have your pocket. This is going to be folded in half. We're going to sew around fold it again on the edge and install the pocket so we'll do that later 
This angle piece is for the flap. This is the lining. And we have two pieces of the lining that will be the body lining. I'll just put that aside. I have my straps. I've cut three pieces, five by 18. In the file, I think I made them six by 18, but you can use whatever width you want. Just adjust, adjust them in the file. I didn't have a 56 inch piece of fabric to cut the strap in one piece. So I've done it in three pieces and I'm going to assemble them in the same way that we do the binding for um, a quilt and I'll show you how I do that. I have the outside pieces. So I've used that batting that I showed you in the beginning of this video, but I cut the batting by hand. I didn't want to cut it out on my sticky mats on the maker and make a mess. So the batting part I've cut by hand. So we have the flap with the batting and we have the body of the bag, both pieces with the batting. So we're going to go ahead and start assembling. And we're back and we're ready to start sewing. We're going to set this aside. We're going to start with preparing the flap for this project. So we need our lining piece and we need our outside fabric with the batting or interfacing, whatever you plan to use. If you're using a fusible interfacing, it would be a good time to press it on. If you haven't done so already, you want to prepare it by pressing it onto the outside fabric. So once it's done, we have our batting face down and our fabric good side up. And we're going to lay the lining fabric on top of that with good sides together. make sure this is all lined up and it is so I'm going to sew a seam quarter inch down one side across the bottom and up the other side be careful to back stitch at both ends because you don't want to pull your seam apart when you turn it right side out just making sure that's straight and you want to leave this end open, the wider end open. So down, across, and back up. Double stitch on the ends and leave this end open. We'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So I've done a quarter inch seam allowance on the three sides, leaving the top open. And I've trimmed off my corners and I trimmed away a lot of the excess seam allowance so that we don't have too much bulk when we turn it right side out. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to turn it right side out, pushing our corners out really well, make them nice and neat. That looks good. We're going to press this again and at the same time we're going to turn in about a half inch all the way around. We won't be sewing that yet. We're going to sew that part as we attach it to the bag. So you're just going to sew in, sorry, so you're just going to press in about a half inch all the way around to give it a good edge. There we go. We'll press that in and then I'll attach the snap that we're going to use on the flap. Okay, so I've pressed in about a half inch at the top, a good half inch. You really do have enough to make a generous fold at the top. This flap is 10 and a half inches long after it's sewn together. So 
you're good with that. I took it to my sewing machine and I did a top stitch all the way around, except for the top. You still want to leave the top open because we're going to install our snap. So to, I'm using these magnetic snaps. I would have preferred to have a silver one, but because of the size of the messenger bag, I wanted a larger snap and I only have this brass finish. So this will do. This will be fine. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure one inch up and find the center. So we are about 11 and a half inches and one inch up. So let's say five and three quarters should be the center and one inch up. That doesn't, I prefer a little higher than that. So we're going to go one and a half inches up. It's not quite 12, so we're going to go here for our center. Just make a little mark. And then I'm going to use the washer that comes with these magnetic snaps to get my marks for cutting. We're just going to center that over the little mark I made. And we're going to make two little lines, one on each side for where we're going to be cutting to install, install our snap. Um, this is the fusible interfacing that I'm going to put behind it so that my snap is well anchored in and won't tear the fabric. I'm just going to put it there and I'm going to give that a quick press. It does show through a little bit so I'm going to make sure it's straight. There we go. I'm just going to give it a little press. Don't worry about the lines. They will be hidden by the snap. I'm going to give it a little press so the interfacing will hold in place. Okay, there we go. The little interfacing is well held in place. Um, some people will use a little scissor and they'll just kind of fold it on that line and make two little snips just there. Um, let's see if I can do that. I don't think the point of my scissor is sharp enough. It's not. I'm just going to grab my little utility knife and I'm just going to poke through carefully not to go too big. There we go. That worked well. We'll put in the base of our snap. That worked perfectly, actually. We'll put on our anchor. And we're going to bend that open. If you need to use a little hammer or a little mallet to press that down nice and tight, that's fine, too. That looks good. You can see how it's installed. And there we go. I'm going to press it again because I don't like to leave anything wrinkled. <laughs> and um, we'll set it aside and we'll get started on the body of the bag. And we're back with the flap all pressed. Bottom of the snap installed. And the top stitching is done and it's all good. And we've done the press at the top half inch press in at the top. So we're just going to set that aside. And the next thing we're going to do is create the body of the bag. So you have your two pieces of good fabric, outside fabric, with your batting or interfacing, whatever you've chosen to work with. We're just going to line those up good sides together, make sure everything is straight.
that looks good on the edges. And once again, we're going to sew down one side, across the bottom, and up the other, not sewing the top. We don't want to touch the top at this point. So just the both sides and across the bottom, and we'll be right back. So I've sewn both sides using a quarter inch seam allowance and then I trimmed off any excess and corners so that I get a nice finish when I do turn it right side out. At the top you might see a little bit of stretching with this batting. I don't, I'm not crazy about it but I will trim that up later. So we're going to prepare our gussets. We're just going to open it up and reach into the corner. Make sure you've lined up your side seam and your bottom seam. Nice and straight. And I'm going to be using a two inch gusset. You can do bigger or smaller, whatever you prefer. But I like to do about a two inch gusset. There we are on two inches. Just going to grab my pen and give myself a sewing line. And we'll do the same on the other side. Once again, line up our seams so they're nice and neat. Make sure the, two, the bottom and the side seam are lined up. I'm going to lay it open and give ourselves again a two inch sewing line. And we'll just mark it with a pen. And I'm going to go ahead and sew on both sides, preparing the gusset on both sides, and I'll be right back. Our gussets are now sewn, so now we're just going to take a little ruler and trim about a quarter inch away. Throw that away, and we're ready to turn our bag right side out. No need to zigzag or serge those seams because they're not going to be visible anyway. You're going to be lining the bag. Should have a nice line up on the bottom, our seams. And there's the body of the bag. Okay, I want to trim away some of that excess batting at the top because it did stretch a little, so I'm just going to lay this flat. Line up my fabric. We're just going to line that up and trim off that excess batting at the top. I don't want it to get in the way when I'm trying to finish the bag. So we'll just cut that away. There we go. Much better. So now we're going to add the rest of the snap. Because I have the batting, I don't think I'm going to need this extra piece of fusible interfacing behind the snap so I'll just let that be. So what I'm going to do to line it up is attach my snap. I'm going to have it finish wherever I'm going to want it when the bag is done. So let's say about there. Make sure it's straight and centered. 
I'm going to hold it there and flip it over. We're going to be attaching this part on the back. But you want to have a little give at the top, so let's move it up a little bit. We don't want it too tight because when the bag is full, we won't be able to snap it closed. So let's say I'm just going to give about a half inch here. About that. It doesn't have to be exact as long as you have it the same on both sides. And I'm just going to grab a pin and put a pin in this to hold it in place. That's fine. Just to hold it in place while I install my snap. Okay, that looks good. Make sure it's straight still. You're going to lift it so that you can see where to put the marks that you will cut through for the balance of your snap. So, let's see. I don't know if this pen is going to show. Make sure I haven't moved anything. We'll try with this pen. Yeah, that shows fine. That side. And this side. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reach inside, make sure you're only grabbing the front of the bag, and I'm just going to poke through a little hole. Another one. You want to make sure you don't make the hole too big because then your snap won't be secure. Wow, these, this is a good magnet. <laughs> Almost didn't get that one off. And we're going to put our snap through and open it. And we'll just press it down. And we'll check it. That looks good. And this is where we're going to sew on our flap. Gonna press that on a little better. If it's too hard for your hands, you might want to take pliers or a little hammer or something to flatten it really, really well. That's good. Okay. I'm going to snap it again. Make sure I line it up even on both sides. I'm going to flip it over. Let's put a marker just where we want it to be. There we go. Now we can unsnap it. And line it up.
There we go. So I'm going to sew this on with the top stitch all the way along. I'm actually going to do two. You don't want to go too close to the top because you still need to add the lining and sew around this edge. So you want to give yourself room to do that. So I'm just going to do two nice rows of top stitching to hold the top on. We'll make sure that it's even. This side could come down a little more. It's better to check a couple of times to be sure before you attach it. So we'll check the front too. That looks nice and straight. Okay, so I'm going to unsnap this. I'm going to take the base off my sewing machine so that I can put this right into the machine and sew two nice straight rows of top stitching to hold the flap on and I'll be back. And now we have our flap all installed with our magnetic snap. While I was off camera I decided to use the fusible interfacing after all. I found the fabric was a little soft for the snap and I didn't want it to tear after putting all that work into it so I added the fusible interfacing and put the bat and the and put the snap back on. So we have all this is all set. You can see I hope on the camera how I attach the flap with a double row of sewing and that still gives me enough room to fold down and to be able to sew to attach our lining to the inside. And if you prefer afterwards, you could actually add another row along, but give yourself enough room to work. Don't do that right away. Okay, the next step is to get our lining and our strap and our pocket ready. I guess I'll start with the pocket. So all we're going to do is fold this good sides together. We're going to sew along both sides. That's all we need to do. And then turn it right side out and press along the top to give a nice finish. This will actually be the bottom, but I'll show you what I mean as we get to it. So just sew both sides of your pocket piece. Turn it right side out and press about a quarter to a half inch in. And of course, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you can make the pocket as big as you want to or wider or I've marked in the file pocket piece so you can change that however you want it to be. But if you do it double and fold it up and sew, you'll have a lined pocket so it won't look like bare fabric on the on the inside. So I'm going to get this ready so I can show you what I mean about turning it right side out and finishing the pocket. And I've prepared my pocket as I showed you. Um, after sewing the two sides I turned it right side out. I pressed in a quarter to a half inch and I top stitched on the folded edge just to give it a more finished look. So now I'm going to install my pocket about four inches from the side and three inches from the top. Just measure it out that way. Three inches from the top and four from the side. That's perfect. I'll just stick a pin in it so it doesn't move while I'm bringing it to my machine. And I'm going to top stitch the two sides and across the bottom. I didn't bother to sew this edge together because it is going to be sewn as I install it to the lining. And my pocket is installed.
It's got a nice finish at the top and just top stitched in at the bottom, all nice and secure. Good size together. Make sure it's lined up. I'm going to put some pins in it. That should be nice and straight. I'm going to sew quarter inch seam allowance down both sides and across the bottom and then I'll continue by creating the gussets on the bottom just like we did on the outside. We're ready to do our gussets on the bottom. So you can see that I've sewn down both sides and across the bottom and then I've trimmed away some of the excess seam allowance to try and reduce some of the bulk in the seams. So now we're just going to prepare to do our gusset in the same way that we did for the outside of the bag. So you want to line up your seams, reach into the bag, line up your seams, and we're going to spread this out. So I'm going to measure in two inches. And that should do it. And we'll just grab a pen and give ourselves a marker for sewing. You can even put a pin in it if you want to hold it right in place. And we'll do the same thing on the second side. Line up our seam on the bottom and the side. Get our point. And we'll line it up at two inches. That should do it. I'll just give myself a sew line. And I'll put a pin in to keep it in place. So I'm going to sew straight across, back stitching at both ends so that our gusset doesn't come apart. And then we'll trim a quarter in about a quarter inch seam allowance, trim off the point. So our lining is ready. The gussets are done at the same size as the outside of the bag. I've trimmed them at a quarter inch and we're going to leave it good sides in and install it in our messenger bag. I'm going to push it right down into the corners. Make sure your corners line up. There we go. Okay. The next thing we need to do is, of course, to finish around the top. But before we do that, we want to prepare our strap because we're going to be putting the strap inside between the outside and the lining. So let's get that ready first. I've got my strap ready to be sewn. I wanted to show you how I did this. I angled, um, because I didn't have 56 inches in one piece, I pieced my strap using 20 inch pieces, I think it was, but I angled as I sewed them together so that the seam would be spread out and you wouldn't have a bulky part on the strap. Also I wanted to show you, because I wanted a wider strap, I folded in about a half inch on each side and then folded in half again. I've cut my strap about 56 inches. In the file you'll see 
three pieces of 20 inches each and it's up to you to adapt the strap however you want it. So now I'm just going to prepare my strap by sewing up each side of it and getting ready to install in the body of the messenger bag and I'll be back to show you the next step. My strap is all ready to be installed and while I was pressing my strap I took out the lining and I pressed a half inch around the top to make it easier so that when we line everything up to finish the bag it'll be much easier to do if the lining is pressed properly with about a half inch turn in. Okay so to install our strap I'm going to start by centering my, seam, my seams for the outside and the lining and I'm just going to stick a pin in it to make sure it doesn't move while I'm working on this. Oh, you'll see in my lining that I have an insert, a divider in the middle. I really didn't like how this turned out, so I'm going to edit that part of it out of the video so you won't be seeing me install it. Okay, so we're going to take one end of our strap and we're going to put it between the lining and the outside, about two inches down. So it'll give you a good place to reinforce. Center it up. And we'll fold in. I'm going to put a pin in that. And a pin on this side. And I'm going to continue all the way around, preparing my outside bag with my lining pinning all the way around when I get to the other side I'm not going to install my strap on the other side yet I'm going to do the same thing I did on the first side line up my seams and line up my seams and I'm going to go about two inches down and put a pin in it so it doesn't move. And what I'm actually going to do once I have this all pinned all the way around is I'm going to put my bag on and measure how long I want my strap to be. So you can do that any way that you like. If you want to just measure 48 inches or 50 inches or however length you prefer. It's hard for me to say what length you should make the strap because we're all different heights and weights and the bag will fit differently. So the best thing I think is just to measure. So once it's on all pinned around, I'm going to put it on as if it's sewn already and I'm going to measure the length of the strap that I want. I'll mark it with a chalk so I know how deep to put it into the bag and where to cut and then I will pin that side in place just like I did on this side. So I'm going to continue pinning and getting ready and before I sew I'll show you how I'm doing this strap on the other side. Okay, get 
that out of the way so you can see that I've pinned the strap on at the length that I want it. I'm just going to make sure that it's centered. This will be my mark of how deep to put it into the bag. I'm going to cut off this excess that I don't need. Throw that away. And I will remove a couple of pins. There we go. We'll just put that in the bag. Center it up. And I'll put some pins in to hold it in place. And that should be the length that I would have it. So let's see, that would be, I'm five foot four, 24. So I would say that I would make my strap for myself. I'm five foot four. I would make my strap 48 inches because I like where it sits on my hip. But certainly you can measure whatever length that you prefer. So now all that's left to do is to do a finishing stitch all the way around the top. And you can see now why I left this area open. If you prefer, once it's, once it's all sewn around the top, you can actually sew another seam along here if you want to keep the lid or the flap um, tight to this part. But I don't mind if it falls open like that. I think it's kind of cute. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. We need another pin right there. I'm going to sew all the way around and I'll be back to show you how it looks when it's all finished. And we're done. I love how this one turned out. So I've sewn all the way around the top edge at the same time installing my straps and I've done a second seam the width of the strap to make sure that it's good and secure. We have a cute little polka dot lining on a solid blue exterior. Kind of whimsical. So I hope you're going to make some of these messenger bags and I hope you're going to post pictures so I can see how wonderful they turn out. Please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you for watching.